Good afternoon, Rotarians. Give me a moment. Welcome to our Rotary Club meeting today. today. This particular meeting is very special. That's because we're going to be honoring some very special past presidents. The, uh, I can't wait to hear what they have to say. I don't want to put any pressure on them. I may have a few questions for them at the end. Just, uh, I'm looking forward to this. But as we get underway, it's a full meeting, and can we start with our reflection from Chuck Mann, and then Kathy, would you lead the pledge? Good afternoon. And to Clint, we say, good morning. Good morning. Yes, there we go. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, being in Rotary gives all of us the chance to serve others. We ask that you help us remember to take advantage of that opportunity as we apply our motto, service above self, in our everyday lives. Help us to serve humbly and willingly as we focus on the needs of our community. Amen. Our sponsor for the entire month is the Toledo Opera. Thank you, Toledo Opera, for your contributions and help. We have a very, very busy and full schedule today, and because of that, I'm, I'm going to uh, bypass the normal introduction of, of guests and friends and, and ro visiting Rotarians, with the exception that I will welcome Helen Bolanis, who is our past district governor and whom we don't see very much. Helen, I feel like I should buy you lunch sometime. Welcome back. <laughs> yes, you probably will. And just looking through this, we have uh, some six new members who are changing their badge and, and becoming regular members. And we're so happy for that. It's Jeff Anderson, Matt Bell, Dylan Ulrich, Jim Park, Marla Ranker, Dave Venable, and Sarah West. Congratulations for all of the time you've been as brand new Rotarians and change your badges, please. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, uh, but we have bowling uh, coming up on, I think, Wednesday, and you can get all this information in the uh, spoke. This is one of the more fun things that we do. Some people bowl, some people drink, some people don't, but if I understand this is one of the best things that we do, and with that, I'm going to move us right along, and to get on with the program, I would like to invite Tom back off to the podium and to take over the microphone. Tim, stay here, pal. OK. Well, thank you for that introduction, but I've got a couple of questions for you. OK. <laughs> Tim, you are the 110th president of the Rotary Club of Toledo. You have been doing this for 14 weeks. How do you feel? What an interesting question. <laughs> Boy, I feel a lot of stuff. The, uh, first, I'm having fun. Um, I'm honored. I'm the 110th president of this club, and this is a very historic club that's played a, played a major role in this city. And I guess what I'm most of all is still intimidated. I recognize that I'm following the people that built this club and the people that in many ways built this city. And the history between the two is, is very close. And happy for the honor, 
don't want to screw it up. That's how I feel. Well, well, Tim, you answered the second question I had as part of your remarks. You said you're having fun. We think you're doing a heck of a job. So, Tim, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Rotarians, it is my distinct honor on behalf of the Toledo Rotary Club Foundation Board of Trustees to be able to help host what is truly a unique and special program. Today is a day of celebration as your foundation announces the creation of the Toledo Rotary Club Foundation 1912 Fellowship and we recognize our first three inaugural honorary members. To begin, let's dim the lights and enjoy this video. The year was 1912. Brand Whitlock was mayor of Toledo. Ohio's own William Howard Taft was president of the United States. The Boston Red Sox beat the New York Giants in an eight-game World Series at a newly opened Fenway Park. The Titanic sank, and Danny Thomas was born. The year was 1912, and a group calling itself Toledo Rotary was launched. And in the century since, Toledo Rotarians have had a transformational impact upon the Toledo region and the world to the tune of well over $2 million, over $1 million in the past decade alone. All this made possible by the Toledo Rotary Foundation, spun off of the club in the 1950s, yet managed by Toledo Rotarians alone and maintained by the club members' treasure, time, and talent. Now, in the same spirit of our 1912 founders, the Toledo Rotary Foundation announces the 1912 Fellowship, a recognition of $1,000 or more donated to the foundation in a calendar year. We had members that were interested in a mechanism that they could donate and the, all of their donation would stay within the Toledo community. And so we developed the 1912 Foundation for that purpose. We want to be able to maximize the grants that we can provide to the community and this is one way we can increase that. Anyone making the $1,000 contribution becomes a 1912 Fellow or may name a fellowship in honor of another person. And the first three 1912 fellowships have been made by the club's board of directors and the foundation trustees. They honor three household names around Toledo Rotary. Our own Dick Anderson, Walt Churchill Jr., and Clint Mock. These three gentlemen are awesome examples of what Rotary stands for. They have demonstrated the principles so clearly and so consistently. All three of them have taught through their own personal example of what it means to be a Rotarian, what it means to give back to the community, what it means to be proud of Toledo and the surrounding areas. We are in their debt for uh, living the Rotary motto, service above self. I can't think of uh, a corner of our community that hasn't been impacted by them. So it's really important that from the acts of charity that they've done through so many years, that we've got to thank them for everything. Because again, we always have to encourage other people in the community, and they are great examples of what we need to be. In 2018 alone, the Toledo Rotary Foundation granted nearly $207,000 to local and international causes. A Paul Harris Fellowship recognizes a $1,000 giving threshold to Rotary International. 1912 Fellowship giving stays right here with Toledo Rotary. The biggest distinction is that the Paul Harris Fellowship goes into Rotary International and Rotary International does very positive things with the money, but we have very little direct impact with where that money goes and how it is spent. Where our 1912 um, um, recognition will put money into our foundation, it is the foundation that we control and have a lot of impact on where that money is spent. I'm a Rotarian for many reasons, but one of the reasons that I'm so pleased to be part of the Toledo Rotary Club is because we actively and thoughtfully uh, provide funding uh, through the foundation. 
Our vetting process is first rate by any standards. It's done by Toledo Rontarians themselves. They're contributing to the money. They're living in the community. They know what this community needs are and what will make this community better. It's a privilege, obviously. And it's a privilege a couple of ways. One, in the work of Rotary itself and the committees and all of that, you have, you have a lot of that intermingling of leaders that's good for everybody. But the other thing about Rotary is it encourages you to get out and really get involved in other things. The museum, for me, the symphony, the Boy Scouts of America, the Toledo Community Foundation, and the list goes on and on and on and on over the years. You want to join Rotary in order to be a part of a service organization that services the community and services the world. And those are the kind of people that will attend the meetings and be an active participant. To me, the fact that something started here in Toledo, Ohio, with a bunch of men that is now the principal charitable exercise of 30-some thousand Rotary Clubs all over the world is pretty damn special, I really think. The 1912 Fellowship is a great idea, and I couldn't think of three better people to be the keynote and the launching pad for this concept. They are awesome individuals, and I'm grateful to have had the vehicle of Rotary to become acquainted with all three of them. Special thank yous to all the Rotarians who are featured in the video, especially the voice of Toledo Rotary, the talented Kevin Mullen, the producer and equally talented Phil Marisi. Also one other person that uh, I'd like to think today because of any one of the trustees, Mary Mancini really put this effort together of the 1912 Fellowship. And unfortunately, Mary fell last week and uh, she could not be with us today, but I understand she is watching right now on YouTube. So everybody, big round of applause for Mary Nancy. First, so that we all understand the significance of the Toledo Rotary Club Foundation 1912 Fellowship, please turn to today's program that you have on your table. Inside the front cover. In summary from the video and what is printed, a 1912 Fellowship benefits our foundation, the Toledo Rotary Club Foundation. It is designated is a designated gift of $1,000, and it will be used to grow the endowment of our foundation. You may contribute in your name or make a contribution to recognize someone else. All 1912 fellows will be recognized in the directory, the annual report, and will receive a pin. So to commemorate this auspicious occasion, it is entirely proper that we inaugurate the 1912 Fellowship by honoring and recognizing three awesome Rotarians. Your club board and foundation trustees have donated in their names to become the first three 1912 Fellows. They are, of course, Dick Anderson, Clint Mock, and Walt Churchill. These three Rotarians have a remarkable history within Toledo Rotary. They are all three sons of Toledo Rotarians, meaning they grew up learning the ideals of Rotary, service above self, and believing in the four-way test. They are longtime members, each being members of our club for over 60 years. Combined, they have 185 years of experience in our club and all three are past presidents of the Rotary Club of Toledo. In your program, we have reprinted the introduction that was published in the spoke on their first week of being president. 
Today, we want to recognize each individually, and we are going to begin with Clint Mock. Unfortunately, Clint could not join us on stage today, but he too is watching us right now on YouTube. So Rotarians, on the count of three, I want you to yell good morning to Clint. Ready? One, two, three. Good morning! Clint, we wave from afar. We wish you were here. Clint, both Dick and Walt have a chance to talk and defend themselves later in our program. But you are stuck with me. In the video we just watched, you mentioned that the role Toledo Rotary played creating the Polio Plus movement, movement within Rotary International is pretty damn special. Well, Clint, the role you play in our club and in this community is also pretty damn special. Clint is one of the foremost historians in the community. If you Google Clinton A. Mock, you will find dozens of YouTube videos featuring Clint. Clint, you are indeed a social media influencer. One of those videos was done with Toledo Rotarian Tom Walton for the Toledo Lucas County Library called Library Sights and Sounds. It's an hour and 25 minutes long. Clint, I want you to know I watched the entire thing and I was fascinated. Some things I want to share with you. Clint is not only an honorary member of the Rotary Club of Toledo, he is also an honorary member of Perrysburg Rotary. Clint has an amazing, wonderful love of the environment. He has taught organic gardening and helped to create and lead several land conservancies, including Black Swamp Conservancy. Toledo Rotary's book, The Historical Tales of Toledo. This is a compilation of historical stories that Clint researched and told originally at Toledo Rotary. Clint says he's not the author. He's just a storyteller. Well, he did have a lot of help. Tom Walton edited the book, and past president Walt McGee and his wife Julia did an awful lot of work to get this book published. And the Toledo Rotary Foundation printed 10,000 copies. To date, this book has raised, for the Toledo Rotary Foundation, $293,030. Truly remarkable, it's still on sale, $25 on Amazon. Clint grew up in the Rossford area under some difficult economic times. It was so difficult that Clint's grandfather actually laid off Clint's father from the family business. Imagine that. As we know, Clint loves a bow tie. Clint, I want you to know that I learned how to tie a bow tie in honor of you. I watched past president Brad Rubini on his first day of being president wear a bow tie, and I knew that I wanted to do the same. Finally, Clint, at the, in, at the end of your interview with Tom Walton, Tom asks you what you would like your legacy to be. You didn't even hesitate. You said, service above self. Wow, Clint. As a Rotarian, as Rotarians, we say we love you and we thank you. Rotarians, please. Please, a standing ovation for past president and honorary member and now 1912 fellow Clinton A. Mark.
Okay, Dick, Walt, you do get to speak later in the program, so there'll be a, there will be fewer plaudits for me, but my goodness, I could go on and on about each of you. Walt, you're next. Your commitment to service above self is exemplary, demonstrated by your community service and your service to our country, serving as Master Gunnery Sergeant in the United States Marine Corps during the Korean War. Another tenant of Rotary service is attendance. Rotarians, today is Walter A. Churchill Jr.'s 2,670th week of perfect attendance. Well, that is over 51 years of perfect attendance. Truly remarkable. And I cannot imagine, of the over 1.2 million Rotarians worldwide, anyone has a better record. What I am saying is, you, my friend, are the world record holder for perfect attendance. <laughs> and as you say so brilliantly, the sun never sets on Rotary. Thank you, Walt, for being an amazing role model. Walt, we have some gifts to recognize you as an inaugural 1912 fellow. Rotarians, please stand and recognize Walter A. Churchill, Jr. as a 1912 fellow. <laughs> Dick, you my friend. Community service. Rotary is indeed a community service organization. And you truly are a Rotary Club all by yourself. Oh my gosh, if we look at a commitment to service, the countless organizations in our community, the word emeritus has become part of your name. You are Chairman Emeritus of the Andersons, reflecting on your leadership in your professional life. And as a testament to your service above self, you are chairman or director emeritus for the Toledo Symphony, the Toledo Museum of Art. You are recipient of the Silver Beaver and Silver Antelope Awards from the Erie Shores Council of Boy Scouts of America, who recently renamed the Pioneer Scout Reservation the Richard P. Anderson Pioneer Scout Reservation. <laughs> The list goes on. Frankly, we don't have enough time to list all of it. But I do have one last thing to share about Dick that I think all of us in this room should hear. In 2009, it was my good fortune to, sh to serve with Dick on a committee that was to determine who the benefactor would be of our club's centennial celebration. We first met in March of 2009 and those were pretty dark days in the economy of Toledo. Many numbers were being considered, many projects trying to determine what we could do. $300,000 seemed to be the number, but as you can imagine, we had some doubts. Finally, in the way only Dick can do, he looked at us, reassured us, and told us it could be done and indeed it was the right thing to do. I knew that day we could raise the money and Dick inspired us over and over until 2012 when we surpassed that goal of 300,000 and we raised $465,000.
Rotarians, without Dick Anderson, I'm not certain we would have reached as high, and I'm not sure our gift to Toledo Metro Parks would have been as significant. Dick, as we present you with your honorary gifts, please know how grateful we are for all you have done for our club and the community. Thank you for everything you've done for this club and the community. Well, Rotarians, please remain standing. <laughs> I have one final role in today's program, and that is to propose a toast. Rotarians, please take your glass, hopefully filled with champagne or water, and raise them. To the Rotary Club of Toledo, 107 years strong. To the inaugural 1912 Fellows, past presidents Dick Anderson, Clint Mock, and Walt Churchill, and how they continue to inspire us to make this club, our club, one of the finest Rotary Clubs in the world. Now, Rotarians, please be seated. And now it's my honor to introduce Bob Savage, program chair, to uh, describe the rest of today's program. Thanks, Past President Tom. So, Candace Harrison, you have the honor of being the only other person today in the, our club being introduced on the stage with uh, these three gentlemen. Um, Candace is going to facilitate our, our uh, the rest of the program here today. Candace, as you may know, is the external marketing director for Toledo Public Schools. UT Alumni Association uh, board member, African American Leadership Council from United Way, board leadership, uh, board of the Leadership Toledo. And she's formerly worked at the museum, the zoo, the University of Toledo, and Romulus, if you're here today, you've had the good fortune to have Candace work for you twice. Um, and, and hopefully you keep her longer th th this time. Uh, what I can't just figure out is Candace has done all these things already, why she doesn't look older. Uh, but. <laughs> Candace, please please join these guys at the stage. Thank you. And Thank I have to. Oh, oh. Can I, just, I won't take too long. Um, and Tom, Tom's already given great introductions today. Uh, but for the three gentlemen that we're honoring today, and uh, and Clint. We know you're with us. We know you're here in this room. You've been in Rotary. You've certainly been in Rotary. You have been, and not only have you been in Rotary as long as I have been in Rotary, you've been in Rotary as long as every single person in this room, including these, these two who have been longer here, longer than most anybody, have been here. Do um, you ever get to the point in the day where you maybe you want to exercise and you're feeling like, eh, I'm not sure I really want to do it tonight, today. Do I have, do I have the energy? Um, well, that's another time that you should think about Walt. Walt Churchill, you know, if you feel like you don't have the energy, Walt still jogs. Um, and is one of a number of astounding things that he does. I, I don't know if he does it to keep fit, to keep the marine mystique going, or to, to keep away the other guys who are still smiling at Lois um, and, and ward them off during, during the day. Lois and, keeps me in shape. Right. And Walt, now since you don't have a competition from your, from your friend here, I'm glad to say that uh, your place is is my favorite to stop home and, and pick up dinner on. To stop and pick up dinner on the on the way home. Um, Clint, 
As long as these guys have been in Rotary, Clint has five years on them, um, and an astounding achievement. The book that Tom Backoff uh, showed, and we used to talk about it more, and I still remember and I miss, Clint used to give a five-minute history lesson at the beginning of every Rotary when I was relatively early, early on. And for those of you who have not read the book, it really is an amazing book. It's, uh, you will learn a ton of stuff. There are interesting stories. There are funny stories. And as Tom said, for 25 bucks, you can pick it up. It makes great books for great gifts for the holidays or put on your coffee table and help, help push that number over 300,000. Um, but in, in addition to the books and the, the number of sales, Clint has personally given at least 150 presentations uh, on the book and the history lessons that, that he wrote a book, wrote about. And although he had help, make no mistake about it, Clint did the lion's share of the work in putting the book together. Dick, uh, Tom gave a great introduction. Inside and outside of Rotary, in this area, you're a man who needs no introductions. Um, you have been a great community and corporate citizen um, and truly a pillar of our community and a pillar of Rotary. There are no three better examples of Rotary than these three gentlemen to all of us. They are idols, they are our friends, and we are proud to call them fellow Rotarians. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, the first thing I want to tell you is that if you look at the center of your table, there are some note cards. And what you are to do with the note cards is if you have questions throughout this part of the program, you can write them on there and then someone will collect them as we get close to the end. And if we have time, because of course we don't want to um, in this legendary conversation early, but if we have time, we will read them and then you can get the answers to your questions. So, what an honor. I am honored to be here talking to you guys. In preparation for this conversation, uh, I had a chance to meet with them prior just to have a short discussion and it was amazing the pearls of wisdom that I received just as a Rotarian, but just as life in general. It was so much to learn from these gentlemen. So again, I'm honored. So one question, and I'm sure as long as you guys have served Rotary, that people um, will want to know, and I'll start with you, Walt, and then uh, Dick will have you, and then we'll, we'll alternate questions in that way. Why did you join Rotary? What drew you to Rotary? Well, my dad came out of the uh, World War II and uh, came back to town, and Herb Felker was a Rotarian for the grocery uh, classification. And he called my dad and he said, uh, I'm having a little problem around here with the people down the street, and so I'm gonna retire and you could have my classification as a grocery. So my dad got joined and, um, and then, you know, I went and visited Rotary along with him. And I could just tell it was a heck of a nice place uh, to meet with the guys. And now we're meeting with the guys and the girls. <laughs> hasn't heard a thing and uh, anyhow so I, <laughs> so anyhow I, uh, I uh, it was it was just part of, of, of the routine and I thought my gosh rotary hasn't hasn't disappointed me it's been a great club to be a part of and you know and and as you know I've done a few visits and so it's I think that's one of the, also one of the uh, treasures of rotary is the ability to visit all over the world awesome how about you Why'd you join Rotary? Uh, <clears throat> I had a, kind of a similar experience because my dad well, was a real believer in Rotary. I got I got Rotary in my DNA. Dad was, there were 110 presidents. Dad was probably about the 25th or something like that, president of this club. He was in his 20s when he was elected president. He was always very, very proud of that. Yeah, but he was dedicated. It's the, uh, the service orientation of Rotary uh, compelled him. Then my brother John, my oldest brother John, who I just dearly loved, uh, came in uh, to the club. And one day, uh, the head of the Maumee Valley News in, in Maumee contacted me and invited me to become a member of, uh, I forget what club it was in, in Maumee. And uh, I thought, well, that'd be interesting a way to get involved in the community more. And I went to Dad, and I said, what do you think? Should I join? He said, oh, you want to 
join the service club. You ought to join Rotary. So with that, I was proposed by my brother John, and I joined Rotary 65, 60 years, a little over 60 years ago, and uh, never looked back. It's, it's been a real trip for me. Thank you. And while Clint couldn't be here with us today, you'd be happy to know we were sure to get remarks from him so that we can include his perspective here. And one thing that Clint shared was that he joined Rotary because his father as well as his grandfather were also members. And in fact, he said that I was named after my grandfather, Clinton A. Mock. So um, I know, let's see, I guess to kind of break the ice a little bit, um, for many years, you guys have had some great experiences. Tell us a funny story about being a member of Rotary, something you can remember that was hilarious. <laughs> well, of course, we have Chuck, Chucky Chuckles, you know, at the end of the meetings. <laughs> but we used to have uh, uh, Jer uh, Joey Lewis was a member here. And he uh, probably not very many of you ever saw him, but he was a, a frequent attendee of Slingle Rotary, and uh, he's the one that had the big mouth. And uh, anyhow, <laughs> he was he was good for a ch chuckle also. He was competition for you, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Well, I, I got involved in some really crazy stuff with 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 Kathy, heading up those. Um, what, what was the name of our fundraisers? It's a balls, and um, one of my, one of my favorite ones was when she asked Franny and me to play Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. And a, lot of you, a lot of you remember that. So luckily I found a good recording of Roy and Dale singing um, Happy Trails to You. And we, I turned that on and, and then we just sang along with it. You know, it sounded pretty good. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was a real kick. And of course Franny loved that stuff. So we got involved in, in a lot of crazy ones. I remember the one where we uh, had the thing where the you open the window and what was that called? Yeah. Anyhow, my my, my don't bother. I, my recall on stuff is terrible, so I'm going to have to ask you more questions than you ask me. <laughs> but <laughs> anyhow, I'll never forget my my job that night was to open that window and yell to the top of my lungs. Sock it to me, <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, I did that. And there was this. There were 500 people out there, and it was dead silent. I thought, what? <laughs> they were they were so shocked, that, and then the place just exploded. You know, it was that was a, well, that whole thing doing that with all the other Rotarians back there. We really had a ball through a lot of those. It's a ball promotions. Thanks to Kathy, she kept on Franny and me to be part of it, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll be thankful for that forever. Thank you. And it's interesting because Clint shared um, something that he used to do as a joke, um, I'm, and this was under his presidency. He said that he used to start each meeting five or ten minutes early. And so um, he said that the younger members didn't get why he was doing that, but the older members did. And so I thought that was kind of funny because I know, you know, I'm one of the people who kind of scurry in here very close to 12. And so I could only imagine if I got here just at 12 o'clock and the meeting was already going, that would kind of freak me out a little bit. <laughs> so another question, and then I'll start with you, Dick, this time. Um, just over the course of your tenure in Rotary, I'm sure there have been many, many changes. And can you share a little bit about some of the changes that you've seen and how they've impacted your time in Rotary? Yeah, well, change is nothing, nothing new for any of us. It's constantly upon us. But if, if I go back to my first years in Rotary and compare it to today's Rotary, there is an amazing difference. Some of it is real good, and some of it I think we've lost some ground. For example, <clears throat> early on, we were much more insistent on attendance. And our attendance was 
absolutely remarkable by today's standards. I mean, we had close to 500 members at one time. I think when I was president, we had very close to 500 members. And uh, we would get, counting makeups, we would get close to 80% attendance at, at weekly meetings. I don't know what it is now, but if you go out most, most Mondays and look at that rack out there, you can see what the percentage looks like. So great, great room for improvement there. Now, the huge change came when, when it was legislated that women were to become part of uh, the Rotary Club. And uh, we were fortunate. We had some wonderful female leadership uh, early on, and <laughs> things got much better organized very fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you an example. After I finished my year as president, the way they used to pick them, you, there was no chairs or anything like that. They just the nominating cl committee got together and decided who in the club would make the best next president and call you right out of the blue and say, will you be the president? I got called in 1970, and I was right after my dad had died, and I was feeling absolutely covered up with my brother John. And I, I turned him down. Well, I came back a few years later, and, and I was elected and enjoyed it. But I, at, at the end, I said to, to the Council of Past Presidents, you know, we should have a chance to become, you know, familiar with the job and, and, and have some time to think about it and plan your time and so forth, because that's a, it's a high BTU job when you do it every week. And uh, here was the answer. No, we've had good presidents. We think it's great. We're, we're doing just fine. That was, that was the end of my rec recommendation. So, but just imagine the difference between that and now and, and how organized we are and how serious we are about each of the various positions. And I think that's very positive. So lots of change, lots very good. Plenty of room for improvement. Thank you. How about you, Walt? What about some changes you noticed over the over the years? Well, when the three of us joined Rotary, we were meeting at Commodore Perry in the ballroom, and uh, that was a unique location. And the Andersons all sat up right in front of, 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 of the head table, and the head table was really about the size of the width of this room, and. Uh, it, it, it was a chance at that time to uh, meet people. They had two occasions where you had uh, uh, your presence known so that uh, you, you got to know everybody. And uh, one of them, of course, Erie Chaplin, he was a, uh, quite an interesting guy, and, and he had his book every year, and he would try to sit with everybody, which meant that he moved all over the room. And uh, that, so it was, there's a lot of things that we did back then, and um, Clinton remembers when we were trying to find a home for where to meet. That's, I know that's one of Clinton's <laughs> sore spots, you might say. But um, Toledo Rotary has been a, a great club, and, uh, but I encourage you all to go visit some others. You know, they, we're in over 200 countries, so you can hardly get away from Rotary. And it's a, uh, it's a great place to meet and, and meet people, and. I was over in Hong Kong, a couple of meetings over there, and uh, it was all about sports, health, and medicine and that, but it was in Cantonese, and so it was a little, <laughs> but I was in a French meeting and sat next to a fellow that he was interpreting it for me. Uh, but really, uh, Rotary is a, uh, a, great, a great place, not just for lunch, but a great place to, for service and, and the continuation of what we think of ourselves as Rotarians and Americans. Thank you for that. And um, I'll also share uh, Clint's reflection when he talked about um, some changes that he had been here to experience. And the thing he said was women coming into Rotary. And he said he also was here to see the first woman appointed director who later became the club's first woman to serve as president. And that was Sue Martin. So that was one of the changes you know, that he wanted to share with us today. So I have just a couple more questions so that we can try to get some questions in from the floor, if possible. Uh, one of the questions that we have is, 
uh, why is Rotary, why, we know why you joined, but now why does it continue to be important to you? And we'll start with you, Dick, and then we'll have you answer Walt. Yeah, there, there are two compelling things, both as I look back and even today, about, about being a Rotarian. One is the commitment to service. It's in my DNA, it's where I was raised, it's where our families thought, and it's been a good way to live. Um, the second thing is the fellowship. There, the opportunity to meet this many wonderful people of like mind, really, and to work side by side to get some things done. You just can't beat that. And if you don't take advantage of it, you're really missing something. You have to you have to dive in and really get involved in order in order for this to happen to you. But once somebody comes to you and said says, you know what, I've been watching you and I could use you, can you help? And then you get those opportunities. And you're hooked for life. My gosh, that thing with the Boy Scouts, I, I was I was asked to be a temporary scout master. And here I am. <laughs> 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 Sixty some years later, just as involved as I could be, and I I've learned so much uh, with that organization with the Boy Scouts. It's absolutely incredible. My son Dan has picked up where I left off and gone way beyond what I ever did with um, service in that organization. And it goes on the same thing with with my involvement with the symphony. I know Bob Bell just latched onto me, and and he was so compelling. As a, as a human being and somebody who cared and somebody who worked his very heart out for that organization. You know, it was all hard to turn him down and I saw I had the opportunity to be of help and did it. And it just goes on and on. And it all, a lot of it started right here from the association of all these people getting together regularly. So I'd just like to see a lot more of you here on Mondays. <clears throat> Thank you. How about you? Well, I, I think when it comes to why you like Rotary and, and your your feelings about it, uh, my dad only had three things he was really involved in, and that was the Marine Corps, politics, and the grocery business. Well, I've had a bigger, broader life than that, <laughs> as Lois and I have shared about 46 years of that, and doing a whole lot of different things. But Rotary is kind of special. Uh, to me, and uh, my dad had 37 years of perfect attendance, and then he had a stroke. So uh, that sort of put it into his uh, attendance, but it's it's just that Rotary is not just another ho-hum club. I used to uh, uh, go cruising last night with, with Tom and Nancy Day, and uh, we would go up to Canada, and uh, I would go to a Rotary club up there at Gore Bay, and, and uh, Tom would go along with me, and, and uh, it was interesting because he would get credit for the Lions Club by going to Rotary. <laughs> but it's, it's, just a, it's just a very unique organization. It's, we, as we've been here for 112 years, uh, and it looks like we've got a long history ahead of us as it unfolds. One of the things about uh, the women joining Rotary, I, I don't know how many of you know the story, but it, part of the reason for that change was clubs like Boston had uh, members of Rotary, and their boss, a woman, was not allowed to join Rotary. So some of the big companies in Boston said, you know, if we can't have our head person join Rotary because he's a woman, we won't have anybody in Rotary. So that's just a, another sideline there. That's, that's awesome. So the last thing on this particular question would be Clint's reflection. And um, he said that Rotary is important to him because of a movement that started here, um, a movement with disabled children uh, was started by the Rotary, and it's now a national program known as the Easter Seals. And that was something that was definitely uh, news to me. And it, I don't know if everyone in the room is aware of that, but um, that was really compelling to me to know that I'm a member of a club that was able to start a national movement. And so that's the way Clint feels as though participation in this Rotary lease is something that could end up going national. 
So my final question I have, and again, it's been an honor to talk to you guys. Um, I know that you are veterans in Rotary, but I would argue that you guys are legends in our community. So again, thank you for this opportunity. And the last question is I'll ask you is, what do you want to leave with our new and younger Rotarians? We are joining a good club. Don't miss it. Come on Monday <laughs> or, <laughs> or make up someplace else yeah. and, and, and participate. And, you know, this club's a little unique. Uh, every so often we get a speaker and they come in and they say, uh, wow, I usually speak at Rotary. They have about 20 or 30 people at the club. <laughs> this is a new, new, new uh, venture for them to look at the crowd we have here. But uh, it's, I think it's a, a lot of things going on. Yeah, I would just say be sure to participate. I, I, I recall um, a makeup I made when I was, Franny and I were on a tour in um, Australia and New Zealand, and we were in Christ Church. And I thought that'd be fun. We had free for the noon, up, noon period. So I went to that meeting. It was handled very differently. But <clears throat> I got to talking about my business and so forth, and they were very interested in the, in the commodity businesses that we were in and so forth, and pretty soon, I was the program. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it was most fat, and they were so generous, you know, and so interested, and we didn't sit, we, we all stood around in a cocktail lake at Mr. That was the way they handled those things, and picked away at some food, and, and that was it. But uh, I'll never forget that. It was, it was a, just repeating what Walt said, participate and, and move, meet with the other clubs, both here and wherever you're traveling. It's, it's a great experience. <laughs> Thank you. And that, you know, obviously resonates with me as a fairly new member to Rotary, you know, how I can keep the motivation and desire to want to serve. I've obviously service before self just in my professional and personal life, but um, it's interesting to hear, you know, the things that have kept you here as long as you have. Uh, so Clint shares for new Rotarians to first, always wear your Rotary pin. You never know where you'll be and when you might need it. It will get you out of trouble, and people will help you. <laughs> Being recognized as a Rotarian is a big deal. You can be in Shanghai, and you can find someone with a Rotary pin, and they'll help you. I've been very proud to have been a part of it. He also shared a little bit more, and I'm going to share just because he isn't here to share it himself. In 2003 or 4, my buddy Walter McGee was elected president. He said, I'd never done this before. Would you just give a short story to start us off for a week or two? Well, it became 52 weeks later. Then they said, this should be a book. So I took notes and rewrote it and gave it to the secretary. She being an honorary member of two clubs, Toledo and Perrysburg, is pretty special and she typed it up. We had someone from every industry in Rotary printer, binder, etc., and it ended up being a beautiful bound book. I wasn't expecting that. We took it to Thackeray's, and I thought it would sell for $10 or $15, and they said, oh no, you should sell this for $40 or $50, and the rest is history. So you just never know what impact you can have as a Rotarian. So now we're going to take some questions from the floor, which we have some interesting questions here. Uh, this question says, talk about the rivalry between Churchill's and the Andersons. <laughs> and, and they won. <laughs> oh my. Anderson's had a has These are a from backup the floor. plan. That's the end of that one. That's the end of that one. <laughs> This one we kind of touched on, which is what should we encourage our young members to do? Did you guys have anything else you want to add, or should I move to the next question? Well, I think the young members should make a point of, of visiting some clubs because a lot of people don't even know how to do it. Or, you know, our, our membership probably is 
most attended to uh, Reynolds Corner where they have pie. <laughs> you go there on a, on a Tuesday and they may have uh, 10 or 12 people from our club making up and eating pie. <laughs> we had pie today. Now that might spark a better attendance. I'm not sure. Okay. Did, did you have anything else? Okay. So um, the last question from the floor, and then I'll give you guys an opportunity just to share your final thoughts before we end today. The last question said, you have a long history of family involvement in Rotary. What is your family's history of involvement in the military? And it didn't specify if it was for one or both. So if it applies, please, by all means, answer. I, m I missed the question. I'm sorry. It says, you have a long history of family involvement in Rotary. What is your family's history of involvement in the military? Well, why don't you go ahead, you then. Okay, well, I, my dad joined when he was, actually his folks gave him a gold Hamilton watch to stay out of the Marines until he was old enough to sign for himself. And he, uh, uh, he, he waited until his 19th birthday, which was required in those days, and joined on his birthday. And I have that gold watch. I don't know what the heck I'm going to do with it. But anyway. And so, but it's uh, interesting, the uh, in involvement. It's been a long history. It's one thing after another. And, and uh, so. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I, I'll first talk about my own military experience. I was a ROTC second lieutenant out of Michigan State. And um, that was 1953, and um, it was a big year for me because I got my degree from Michigan State. I got my commission as a second lieutenant infantry, and I married my wife, <laughs> which well, was fantastic. <laughs> And, and for any of she was able to stay with me. I, I was stateside. It wasn't but a month or so after I signed on for active duty uh, down at Fort Benning for uh, BIO, uh, the basic infantry officers course to, that all the ROTC officers went through when they entered active duty. And um, it wasn't it wasn't a month or so after that, but what the agreement was signed to just quit fighting over there. I don't think there was any anything official about it. They just, just decided to quit. And uh, I was moved to Fort Leonard Wood where I was, as a second lieutenant, I was assigned a company. I was a company commander uh, of these basic training infantry uh, People who were recruited, so they didn't want to be there. None of them. <laughs> We'd, every every eight weeks, I'd get 300 more kids from Chicago and Detroit that had, did not not want to be there, be there. And we were getting the people back from from Korea who were who had been really mentally impacted. First time we saw that, you know, and it was a very interesting time for me to try to manage. Um, the uh, activities of that company. So I had a wonderful experience in the military. Tomorrow, my grandson and namesake, Dick Anderson, my da son Dan's youngest, is signing on to the, into the, he's, he's, been, he's trying to become a Navy SEAL. He has a brother-in-law who's a Navy, who's a Team Six in the, in the SEALs right now. And Dick's been working out and he's going into his tomorrow be going on active duty at, um, in Chicago at the Great Lakes uh, Naval Center there for his basic training, and he's in for eight, eight weeks, so that's a real personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then finally, I, I'm so proud of my older brothers. My three oldest brothers were in World War II, were all fighter pilots, and so you cannot imagine how, how proud of them I was. And my pr brother Don was a, a technician. He was a radar technician in the Navy. So they all got in, but I was too young. My dad kept me out and to work on the farm, and I milked cows and pitched you-know-what. So <laughs> <laughs> that was 
that's my claim to fame. <laughs> you prompted a few ideas that I forgot to mention. Uh, I joined January 14, 1947, and my dad was the uh, uh, commanding officer of the local reserve outfit. And uh, that was 47. I was a senior in high school. Uh, I joined, I started college and joined the Marine Corps all the same within months. And uh, it was interesting because uh, we were going to summer camp and, you know, in, in June of 1950, we thought, you know, things are getting a little bit hot over there in Korea. And uh, none of us had, that had joined during that period of time had ever gone to boot camp. So we got activated and uh, out to Camp Pendleton, and uh, we arrived, and, and they needed uh, uh, some, some replacements for some people that were on, on this ship that was end up landing in Incheon. And uh, so they classified us all, and uh, I, if you had three summer camps and 80% uh, attendance, you were classified as combat ready. <laughs> <laughs> I had four summer camps and 100% attendance. <laughs> so I had no choice. <laughs> and anyhow, so on the third day I was out there, uh, we went aboard ship, and it, and, uh, it was kind of interesting. Uh, we didn't have uh, dog tags, and we didn't have uh, rifles. Uh, we, we had received a full series of shots and vaccinations in Toledo. We got another set, and we got to Pendleton. We got aboard ship, and we got another set of them. So if anybody's worried about smallpox, I could probably give you a blood transfusion. <laughs> 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 anyhow, it was it was an interesting uh, uh, entry, and and I think the the Marine Corps, uh, in spite of what it sounds like a, a short circuiting, there not much training. Uh, we had I think we had enough training, and uh, we we didn't get all the harassment. We missed the harassment, which I guess we could pass that over. But anyhow, so I, that was a. Uh, uh, interesting time, and I stayed in for 30 years, and uh, so we tr we trained for Vietnam, but uh, we didn't go. I, and I think that's something I just as leave miss anyhow. But <laughs> You're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> right. Thank you so so much. So we are at time. Um, again, I wanted to just thank you for taking the opportunity to sit down with me and talk to our fellow Rotarians about your experience over the course of your time with Rotary. I would also like to thank Clint, who I'm sure is watching. Um, I hope I did you proud with your questions. Remember, I am not a reporter. I just play one at Rotary. And <laughs> thank you again, and thank you all for your time and attention. take them if you want them. I think they're compliments of Churchill's. <laughs> the uh, next thing is uh, past presidents. We've got a lot of past presidents in the room. If you would stay after the meeting for a photograph, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. I think I talked about bowling coming up Wednesday. Is uh, Tommy Romer around? Yes. Okay, so if people were going to go bowling, is your friendship still for sale? Okay, and uh, we have Buffalo Soldiers here next week. That should be interesting. There are no meetings following this meeting, and we are adjourned.